Okay, hello. I can't drop this thing I'm working on. I'm just super inspired these days. Um, so I'm working on the exploring this uh, perspective of state management from the actor model pattern. And what would a dev tool experience look like on top of, of that? Um, and it's really interesting how APIs evolve. Um, because if you create an, a, a library for a framework, you tend to inherit the approach of the framework to make it similar. And if you make something new, you might have like preferences for object, object oriented or functional or whatever. And that kind of drives the API. Um, but um, what I do is I look at APIs from the perspective of the dev tool, because the dev tool needs a lot of information from the library to uh, reflect how it works. And by adjusting the API, uh, it makes it easier and sometimes completely necessary for the uh, dev tool to get the information it wants. So you constantly have this uh, balance of, okay, you can make it super easy for the dev tool to get the information it wants, but then you get a shitty API. Uh, but if you get too smooth of an API, uh, like uh, if you don't think about the dev tool, like you can't go in and get, grab the information you want. So you have to do it from the get go. But what I have experienced is, is that you usually end up with an, a better API. So that, uh, so like the dev tool understands better the API uh, or the better the dev tool understands the API, the better you will under understand it as well if you keep these two things in mind all the time. Uh, anyways, we are going to look at an example. I made some changes to the API and also the dev tool. So I'm kind of excited to, to show you this. So we import an actor from Actorial, uh, which is a working name. Um, and then we have this other actor we're going to look at soon. Uh, we're going to use TypeScript so that you see the typing power of this. Uh, and what we have here are two different states. Uh, we have an app actor which has a loading state and a loaded state. In the loaded state, we have access to a title. And then we handle one single event, which is called title updated, and it takes a string. So let's go ahead and insert this stuff. Uh, the initial state should be loading. Uh, we don't have any data there. And then the events we're going to handle is during the loading state, we are actually going to handle the title updated. Um, event and let's see data data we get the title here and we're going to return a tuple of the new data and we're going to move into the loaded state and then in the loaded state we don't handle any events cool so that's our thing if we look into our index file we can see that we import spawn from actorial and also the actor itself. So we spawn the actor. Um, yeah, there's a type error here, but this is uh, related to exploring how would you actually expose these actors to like a React application? Because you don't really want to import the actors directly f uh, into the components, because that um, is problematic related to testability. You really want to expose them through a provider. But the question is, how do you do that? Do you have like one actor for each page? Um, and then you kind of spawn them on a provider for each page? Or do you have like one main actor that handles all the rest? But what about state then? That, then it becomes like a global state store, which is kind of like what we're... Um, uh, well, I'm not sure if we're trying to avoid it. Um, because it's really nice to have your state name spaced. So you don't have to figure out where your state is by uh, looking into the file structure to figure out what file to import. You kind of have uh, a hook and on that hook, you can hit the dot on your keyboard and it just pops up. It tells you, okay, you have some admin state, you have some issue state or a user state. And then you just namespace nested uh, state so that you can explore all the state of your application. Um, but anyways, uh, this is something to explore. Uh, and then we have our component um, and it uses the actor we pass in. And then we can see that if I type this again, we can see that when I say state equals loading, for example, it gives me an error on the title because we don't have the title. We have said that we don't have a title during the loading state. 
but when it's loaded, we have the title. Let's look at the running application. Now it's stuck in the loading state and we can see in the dev tools that we have an actor here uh, in the loading state and we can handle the title updated. So let's just do that now directly in the component. Um, and we're going to use an effect. It's only going to run once. And we're going to use the actor dispatch title updated. Uh, and we're going to put it behind a timeout uh, just to see that it flips. And let's say hello world. Save that. And after half a second, it moves to hello world. And we can see our actor moved into the loaded state. Now, what's really interesting here is that if I were to fire off hello world 2, hello world 3, we can see that it, it stops at hello world. Because when we, um, uh, we can move back in time here. When we uh, uh, got the first event here, title updated runs, uh, we moved into the loaded state. And the thing is that in the loaded state, we are not actually handling title updated. So we can see that it's being fired, but nothing happens because it, the state isn't active. And this is the essence of, uh, of state machines. They handle this uh, to create more predictable applications. We, it's a super powerful concept. Um, and in the DevTools, we should like indicate this with a red color that the event triggered, but the state wasn't active. So you can like clear, clearly see this. Um, cool. But let's remove this now because we rather want to trigger this from within our actor. And previously, like you hooked uh, events on the actor, but you don't do that anymore. Now we uh, have this other property called on, and we can say uh, like on a specific state, we want to do something. Uh, so we want to do something when it's loading. And what we get here is the current data. We get uh, the dispatcher and we also get spawn. Um, and again, we want to set the timeout, uh, half a second. Let's dispatch title updated. Hello from actor. Uh, and what we can see now is that after half a second, it moved into loaded state again, but it was based on, uh, this subscription here. So we can see that when the title updated, uh, dispatch was run, it was actually run from this subscription currently. It, like all this should be visually more um, clear, like what's a sub subscription, what's an actor, stuff like that. But you see that this loading subscription um, is what caused this event to trigger. Uh, and it knows this even though uh, it's asynchronous, which is really, really cool. Uh, that might not be obvious, but actually handling dev tools uh, with asynchronous code is really, really difficult. Uh, but because we have this constraint of the different states, uh, it's actually uh, quite straightforward to do it. Uh, but yes, so this is cool. Um, we can see that the dev tools understand the dev tool understands this. But what, what what we can also do here is that we can spawn another actor, and this is what the actor model uh, pattern is all about. It's having an actor. Uh, that is able to spawn child actors. And then these child actors can send messages up the, up the wire. Uh, so the way we would do this is that we will return a spawn here, which means that uh, whatever we spawn will be disposed whenever we move out of this state. Um, and what we're going to spawn is this get title actor. And uh, this get title actor doesn't take any initial data, so we'll just say null. But what we want is to react to a state change. So we can pass in an object there. And as you can see, this actor also has a loading and loaded state. And um, what we want to do is that when we are on the loaded state, we'll uh, get the data. And as we can see on the data here, it has a title. So we want to dispatch up to our uh, parent actor, the title like this. Um, and if we take a quick look into get title, it, it works uh, the same way. Like you have loading, 
Um, and on when it's loading, we do like a set timeout and we dispatch that the title has been fetched. It updates the state, oh, sorry, the data, it moves into loaded. And then what we do here is that uh, we, when this is loading, we spawn a get title. And when that is loaded, we dispatch up to the parent. Um, so let's uh, save this now. And as we can see now, things are getting uh, a little bit more complex. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. So as we can see now, uh, we have an actor here. Um, there's a um, loading subscription here. And on that loading subscription, we have spawned another actor. So they are connected, which has a loading and a loaded state. And on the loading state, uh, it has a subscription related to fetching the title. And uh, on the loaded state, we also have a subscription. And uh, that's coming from, uh, from spawning it up here. So what's interesting now is when I move back here, you can actually see the whole flow of things. So there was a subscription on the loaded state here, and that was triggered. And then that caused, um, uh, that, that moved through the, the subscription that we created on the loading state of the first actor. And then it uh, dispatched the title updated event. So the point is that you can actually see the whole flow. Where is the data coming from? And where is it moving through the actors and the different subscriptions? Again, visually, this can be done much, much better. There's also more information here related to what data was actually passed and what's the current state of the actors and stuff um, or current data. But I just wanted to show you this, uh, what we are actually able to do. And I think this is super, super fascinating and very powerful because you will be able at any point in time to see what is, what uh, is the activity in my app now by just looking at the highlighted lines. And then you can go into the individual actors and you can see, as we can see here, this actor uh, fetched the title. Um, oh, this seems to be a bug actually. Yeah, I have to fix this. Um, because it should really only show the, this one. Yeah. But yeah, still some work to do here. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to sh like finish this off with like, oh my God, this is awesome. Uh, but it is awesome, uh, but it's a work in progress. Um, yes, I guess that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, thanks for following along. Uh, please give some feedback if you think it's cool, if it has some, if it makes sense to you, if it doesn't make sense to you, um, I'll keep uh, working on it and hopefully in the next version, I will have some more explicit UI and, and stuff like that. So you can more clearly see the difference between like the subscriptions and, and everything. Cool. Uh, bye bye.